How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at Die Dark Volume 2. This is a comic I've been really, really enjoying, and i super happy with Volume 2 as well. Die Dark, you have Zaha Sanko, and he is wanted by the whole galaxy because if you get his bones, supposedly, you get a wish. So he's a man on the run, his life support uh, pack is, for whatever reason, a robot, which is his one of his few friends, and when you're on the run and death surrounds you, literal Shimada Death, a Grim Reaper, is <laughs> another one of your very, very few friends. At the end of the last issue, he got a spaceship, and in this issue, we'll get to go to Space Walmart. <laughs> and it's way funner and way more thought out than you might think. And that is one thing I really do love with this book, is the whole world feels very well thought out, but it doesn't feel exposition dumpy. It just feels natural in a way where I want to learn more. And even things like how does a Space Walmart work, is super, super interesting, but we also just get a bunch of chill moments with the characters just shopping. There are a few other things in here, and it does lead to a pretty strong finale. Um, yeah, a fun book. We get to see him upgrading his stuff. You know, they talk about manga getting adapted into anime, but I think this would be a really strong candidate to adapt into a video game instead. I really do like seeing Sanko slowly leveling up. He gets a ship, he furnishes the ship, he has to think how to spend his real world dollars and his bones, and it seems like he's finally got Shimada Death to join his party, and it's getting slowly bigger. And I do like him leveling up, him building up a life. I do like to see the way this thing progresses. And, you know, it's progressing and it's slowly going towards its overall goal. We're just now meeting the fourth person wanted by the evil empire type thing. And, yeah, just now meeting the fourth character barely in volume two, you know, so... I really do like where this is going. I really can't wait to read the rest of it. But I just love this dark, messed up, horrific horror space. It's like Alien, but with the attitude of Adventure Time. And it's just so strangely dark and strangely chill at the same time. It's really, really cool. But anyway, if you guys want to see me talk more about this book, I'm going to switch to the close-up camera. I'll show you guys a bit more of the story, a bit more of the arc, and try to talk about the different plots that go on in here. But again, no major spoilers. So without further ado, let's switch to the close-up camera. All right, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at Die Dark Volume 2. Let's bring this closer to the camera. We can see our three main characters riding the strange centipede-like cart. And I do like that this has a step-in image of Shimada Death kind of mirroring their pose. So a really cool transition into the book. There's the spine with Zaha Senko on the side. I really do like they're going to keep changing this character out over the coming volume. So you have a nice lineup of your leads. There's the plot synopsis, some of the holes from the Marutech, 1399 US, rated 15 plus. And then if we flip it open, I really do like they have a cast of characters and a previously on. This really helps you learn all the characters' names. And if it's been a while since you read the last one, they have a catch up, which is super cool. And it's printed in color. Anyway the table of contents we see that this collects bones 7 all the way through bone 12 but also features a bonus bone which is great and I also like it when we talk about bonus features in this book it once again has a crossword puzzle where if you're paying attention to the comic you can answer some questions about it and unlock a secret word that's cool 
this book also preserves some color pages. Sometimes in manga you see these grayed out when you get a special color page, but here they preserve them, which is super cool, and I definitely like that. And between some of the chapters, you'll see bonus special sketches, like here's one of Masante Box, and then the next page is going to be a diagram and breakdown of all the items inside her box. It's some cool stuff, so I do appreciate all the bonuses and, and cool things like that. Anyway, after that, we're going to get into the story proper. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to talk about some of the plot points and show you guys some of the art. But I'll try to avoid significant spoilers. But we open up inside their spaceship. I really do love the design for their spaceship being like a giant corgi with earthen huts on its back. That's just a crazy idea. But we see that uh, Senko and Avocane are asleep on the floor, and it turns out they have the ship, but they don't have any furniture. So the robot, Moha, which is the same name as the ship because he essentially is the ship, will say, let's go to essentially Space Walmart, or the Marutech station number 44. And I really do love just how unnecessarily well thought out this place is. It has a good bit of lore, but the lore doesn't slow the story down. It still focuses on being a couple of chill buddies floating through space going on adventures, and the lore seeps in naturally, and you can tell that they spend a lot of time thinking about this. The shopping carts look like centipedes, which is super weird, and their inside is like all these holes, and those are the different departments, and you tell it which one you want to go to, it's going to start climbing on the walls. But there's other things that they thought about that were, you know, again, good world building. They spent all their bones, but they have regular universe money, and I do like that there's a distinguish between the currency of one uh, universe and the currency of another. They also talk about how these things are unmanned, and what they do to prevent pirates is if there's a break-in, they just blow the whole ship up. It's a loss for them, but the pirates are dead and they don't gain anything. So after you blow up enough ships, people are going to stop trying it. And you know how they're unmanned? That's because they have robot zombies that will help you out. You take a corpse, you stick a computer in its brain... And that's all you need, and it'll run for like 50 years or so. So I do love just how much they've thought out and planned, and then just casual, chill shopping. It's just so fun and bizarre to go to Space Walmart. But anyway, there's their pile of stuff. The crew is in like this big Costco-looking uh, restaurant, and Sanko's going to get this idea. Wait, these zombies only last for 50 years. They must have a trash bin, and this world doesn't use bones as currency, but my other world does. I should raid their trash. And that's when Shimada shows up and says, that's a great idea. And if things go wrong, which they very well could because a ship is always on the edge of blowing up, so it does lead into this tense heist moment with a very interesting thing, how this... uh this arc plays out and learning more about how this place works and it has of course a dark dark secret but we do get a little bit checking in with this new character again he has a mysterious power you don't know what it is but he's going to a planet where everyone's doctors it's a big hospital wide planet and yeah he needs to see a doctor turns out he's on the run from the evil corporation but before we get too far into his story, the rest of the chapter is spent making a meatball spaghetti sub, which I do love. It's like, hey, you know how we're in the middle of this intense moment? Cooking for the rest of the chapter. And we get the, the little dog there in the background just dancing around and having the time of his life. Um, but additional stuff we do get is we do flash back to six years ago and get another fun little adventure when he's a uh, meatball spaghetti and you can see he misses Shimada death and built a little statue of her and there's a bunch of bullies and he's like I have to pretend the bullies are tough and beating me up but in reality I can 
barely feel it. And then we actually get Shimada coming back. They're about to go on a field trip. And all of a sudden, she comes back and she actually takes on a little Shimada form to blend in with the class. But of course, if she's coming back, something's up. And does it have something to do with this big junk ship and abandoned spaceship we saw floating by? Hmm, maybe. It's not the biggest adventure, but it is fun to check in with, you know, young, uh, young Sanko again. But anyway, you know, I said they're low on bones and they do need supplies from the dark net, uh, dark nest rather. And not having much money, we're going to get death going, hey, let's check out this abandoned ship. And I won't go too much farther than that. Well, not abandoned ship, but a ship that she smells death on. Uh, so I won't go too much farther than that, but it does play out pretty fun from there and actually gets to a pretty intense situation. You can see kind of a plot starting to build between a lot of these semi-related chapters, and we get to see them uh, come together in a few ways, and I really am curious what's going to happen there. Overall, I really did love this volume, same as the last one, and I think volume 6 is coming out pretty soon, so I'm going to really try to read through these pretty fast, because again, I do really love the book. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom, should be my manga playlist, where you can find my review for volume 1. But I've also talked about things like Chainsaw Man and Junji Ito and a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist should pop up on the bottom pretty soon. Have a good day now.